every animal on Earth that ever encountered fire has run away from it. Until now. Homo erectus are at a crossroads of human evolution. If they can do the unimaginable and conquer their instinctive fear, they will harness a new power. They just need the nerve to reach into the blaze. When humans tamed fire, this was obviously a huge step forward, and it must have been a, a remarkable event for people to uh, face up to fire and learn how to control it, rather than running away from it, which is the natural instinct. And once they could do that, once they could capture fire and, and eventually even make it at will, uh, this was a huge advance. The impact of fire was enormous on human evolution. The technology of fire will give Homo erectus heat and light and protection on their travels, helping them to migrate across the world from Africa to Asia and beyond. This is how Eugène Dubois came across their fossil remains in Java. But this nearly human species is very different from Dubois' idea of an upright walking ape man. In his mind, he's found the perfect mix of ape and human characteristics for a missing link. Now, all he has to do is convince the rest of the world. And it's not going to be easy. I think he must have thought that the world was ready for this, and when he announced it, uh, the world of science would be at his feet for making this great discovery uh, that the world had been waiting for. And of course it didn't work out like that because when Dubois actually tried to publish the material and showed people the material, their view was that it was too ape-like to be a missing link. Dubois is convinced to the end that his fossils represent a missing link. But the scientific world does not agree and rejects his claim. Because he never attended his own dig, he can't even prove his pieces belonged to the same creature. The verdict of most experts is that the leg is human, but the skull looks like an unknown species of ape. He leaves the Dutch East Indies, he goes back home, and no one's paying any attention to his work. No one's paying attention to his fossils. And it must have just broken his heart. He ended up basically assembling his fossils and said, right, if you're not going to pay any attention to me, you're not going to get access to my material. Must have been one of the greatest sulks in scientific history. If you don't believe me, you can't look at my stuff. The scientific world will ultimately recognize the true value of Dubois' discovery, but not for several decades. In the meantime, the search for the missing link continues. And at the start of the 20th century, the focus turns from Asia back to Europe. Because in Britain, a discovery is made that will amaze the world and create one of the biggest scandals in scientific history. Arthur, look, look, teeth. Suddenly, there's a new contender that fits the idea of a missing link perfectly. It's got to be. In fact, it's almost too perfect. Well, Dr. Watson, what do you think? But then, forgeries often are. Extraordinary. December 1912, London. 
A new fossil contender for the title of Missing Link is about to be unveiled at the very center of the scientific establishment. This time, the experts were ready to be convinced. Because this was the perfect ape man, and it was British. There was this tremendous uh, rivalry between Britain and Germany building up to the First World War, both nationalistic, artistic, and, and certainly scientific. And the fact that Britain had nothing to match the Neanderthal find, I think, was a factor in the success that Piltdown had. Once it was delivered, here was evidence that we could match anything the Germans had. There is a sense of expectation among the eminent guests of the Royal Geographical Society. And Charles Dawson is about to become the most celebrated fossil finder in the British Empire. Gentlemen, may I introduce you to Piltdown Man. The reconstructed skull shows the exact combination of features everyone has expected to find in a missing link. What they felt at that time that the essence of humanity, the essence of being human was the large brain size. And their concept of the missing link was a large brain uh, mixed up with some eight black characteristics. And this is of course what Piltdown Man was. So, is Piltdown Man just another early man? On the lines of Neanderthal? I think not. Why? The jaw. What Piltdown delivered was what many British experts were hoping for. Something that seemed to have a large brain in a modern shaped brain case, although rather thick and primitive. And in the jawbone, we have evidence of a much more ape like jaw and teeth. And this weird combination was what actually some British experts have predicted, that the brain had grown large early on in human evolution, but the teeth and jaws lagged behind. And Piltdown seemed to show that, and what was more, it was British. Three years earlier, the first piece of Piltdown Man had emerged seemingly by chance. Workmen digging a road had found what they thought was a coconut and casually smashed it. It was Piltdown Man's skull. Charles Dawson is an amateur fossil hunter with a burning ambition to find something truly earth-shattering. He's walked past this site regularly Good day, man. in the hope that something significant might emerge. Anything today? Now his perseverance is finally oh. rewarded. We've got this. When he examines the first piece, he instantly recognizes it as a skull fragment. Where's the rest of it? And there could be more. Do you think you could find it for me? Let's try. Agreed? All right? Good. Dawson knows he is onto something at last. But to get maximum exposure for his find, he knows he'll need to involve a professional expert. A year later, he's persuaded Sir Arthur Smith Woodward of the British Museum to join in the search for more evidence. The skull fragments look vaguely human, but they hope to find evidence that its owner could be older and more primitive. Evidence of something more ape-like. Oh, I got here. And in a surprisingly short time, they find it. This is definitely not a stone. Arthur, look, look. Teeth. What? We've got teeth. The evidence now seems conclusive. It's got to be. And with Smith Woodward's support, Dawson feels able to make his boldest claim. Well, 